Yeah, having understood the complexity yeah, of mental health challenges, how do we seek for help? Yeah, Sister Casey, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Sister Mian. Um, but before that, I want to continue with the marketing, okay? I was from the 14th batch. <laughs> I completed the 14th batch and then I went on to do my master in clinical psychology and then I came back to BGF uh, and helped out with the training. <laughs> and yeah, and Brother Cheng Yam was, was there, work, working very hard together with Brother Cheng Yam. Yeah. And uh, really, thank you very much to all the volunteers who, who continue to, you know, with this effort. Okay. What, what Dr. So said just now was really very relevant. Something that really struck me was about fear. Um, a lot of people probably don't know what, what psychological treatment is all about. In, in my field, um, I have patients who come and uh, they still have a lot of stigma. I don't take medication. People would think I'm crazy. I cannot tell my boss. I cannot tell my, uh, my, my friends, my neighbors. Yeah, so fear. So that's why I decided that for today's talk, I'm going to start with giving the audience okay, here and also those on Facebook just to have a glimpse of what uh, therapy is is all about yeah just just a glimpse just give you an idea I think from movies and shows yeah this is therapy <laughs> you lie on the couch and then you have a therapist there and then you just talk 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 now what is that all about okay I think that psychodynamic is it they do that yeah but I don't think anybody does that anymore <laughs> Right? Yeah. Okay. So, so forget about this one, okay? It is just on movies. Okay. So I'm going to tell you uh, uh, from generally what is therapy and more to, from my point of view, that's what, what I used to do, what I do. I think most people uh, will have this anticipation and perception when you go and see a therapist, it is a place, a safe place where you can share your trouble, you can express your emotion. It is, a, it is a place where it's safe, where the therapist does not judge you. You can say the most stupid thing about yourself, the most hateful things, and the therapist listen empathetically. So I, I guess most people know about this. Now, at the same time, a therapist is also your cheerleaders. A therapist also help you to see your strength because all human beings have strengths and weaknesses. So in therapy, it's not just about your problem, it's also what you have done well in your life, how you have coped. I must say, I am usually humbled by a lot of my clients who have been through very difficult time and yet, they survive. They still strive. They still they they, they still um, try so hard, you know, to contribute to function. So therapists will help you to see that you have done well. Of course, sometimes in a therapy session, the therapists help you uh, to work through your problem. You know, you talk about your problem, but at the end, empower you to be able to look at your problem and solve your own problem. Now, another thing about therapy is also about skill. Remember mental health is about coping skill? Yeah, coping, there, there are different types of skill that in ther uh, therapies may help. Uh, social skill, uh, uh, stress management skill, problem solving skill, communication skill. So partly it's also skill training, um, if you think that that is uh, appropriate and helpful. Um, the other thing, Okay, overall, I would say that, at least for, for me, um, therapy session help a client to get some clarity. When you get clarity, you solve your problem. You know, you don't need to depend on a therapist. And a therapist sometimes also accompany you in your journey. In your journey to, to seek uh, a better quality of life, in your journey to face your problem. Maybe you can't solve the problem immediately, but you have someone, remember the cheerleading, and someone to accompany you along the journey. 
So I, I hope that um, when you all know what therapy is all about, it, it, is, it is not so scary, you know. It's not so scary. You get help in different ways. Okay, so now, so let's say you decide you want to seek help. Again, it's about unknown. Uh. Who do I go to? How? How? Who? Who does what? You know? So this one, this uh, uh, kind of an infograph. Yeah? Mm. This is in general. Yeah? This is in general in Malaysia. In Malaysia, we have uh, three types, three categories of recognized uh, mental health professionals. Uh, the licensed counsellors, registered counsellors, clinical psychologists and, uh, and a psychiatrist. So let's start with what is a registered counsellor. Okay. The qualification, yeah? a qualification uh, in Malaysia, a registered counsellor uh, require a minimum bachelor degree and I think now mostly uh, do their masters, uh, masters of uh, counselling and uh, oh yeah talking about masters of counseling and talking about marketing again uh, i think one you where's one you yeah one you <laughs> yeah one you uh, one of our volunteers who have been through three stages now she's she's graduating soon i think she still have probably one more semester no <laughs> yeah she's sweating yeah so she's she pursue uh she pursue her master uh, counseling okay anyway coming back to this one uh, um and in Malaysia, the registered counsellor is, um, how do you put that, is regulated by Lembaga Counsellor and there is an act, there's a counselling act. Huh? So for a counsellor, you need to go through the, the education and the, yeah, and the Master of Counselling uh, will have some compulsory hours in internship. So clinical experience is actually important and then the Lembaga will look at um, the hours that required and then kind of give a license, you know, a rubber stamp. Yes, you are qualified to see client. And what does a counsellor do? Oh, I'll come to that later. I'll come to that later. Okay, now, clinical psychologist. I'm clinical psychologist. Sister Mia is a clinical psychologist. And the qualification is a minimum a master, a master of clinical psychology. And the program uh, requires a certain training you need to cover a certain things and one of them was of course therapy is one psychotherapy the other one is assessment um, the internship again is very important and then of course the psychiatrist dr so is a psychiatrist so i suppose it's easy to understand for me it's easier to understand a psychiatrist is basically a medical doctor specialized in psychiatry right okay so a medical doctor that that specialized in delivering babies is called gynecologist <laughs> So, yeah, so Dr. So is a medical doctor who also knows how to treat cough and cola. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> but specialized in psychiatry. Okay, yeah. Now, so now you know there are these three types of uh, mental health professional. So, what's the difference? Who do you go to? Now, again, this is very general, okay? Generally, by our, uh, by our training, by the academic training, uh, a counsellor. A counsellor is usually trained in dealing with healthy population or mildly distressed population. So it's kind of like above the line, you know. It's doing a lot of prevention work, uh, coping, uh, stress management. And um, I think a lot of counsellors are also trained in career guidance. So some of them is called guidance counselling. Um, so there are different types of counselling course. Yeah? Some is called guidance, some is called uh, psychological. Some has a little bit more inclination towards uh, so-called abnormal, not a very nice word, abnormal psychology, but um, more leaning towards the training of uh, clinical psychologists. Some has less, depending on, on the course. Yeah? And for a clinical psychologist, uh, our training um, I think over here in the screen it says cognitive and behavioral assessment. Mm, what does that mean? Cognitive and behavioral assessment. Um, if we're talking about cognitive assessment, uh, how your mind work, um, probably something a bit different that clinical psychologists do that uh, counselors don't quite do is uh, is 
is cognitive assessment, uh, IQ test, you know, you all know about IQ tests, huh? uh, this kind of assessment, some are very specific. Now, if you if you follow all this, uh, what, Amber, this Johnny Depp case, huh? Yeah, yeah, the, the case, uh, remember there is this forensic psychologist who talk about MMPI, you know, how many hundred questions, yeah. These are the kind of assessment that clinical psychologists are trained. Uh. So this is a special area of a clinical psychology. So when, when I was in the hospital, we work very closely with the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist will come to us, oh, I need you to assess this person, whether any personality disorder, and then we took out, whip out the MMPI, you know, answer a few hundred questions, and then we feed back to the psychiatrist. Okay, so that is, um, that's assessment. Um, but most of us, um, especially when we come out um, and work in, in the private sector, it's actually a lot of psychotherapy. Yeah, psychotherapy, talk therapy. We, we do psychotherapy and names will be like CBT, you know, that kind of thing. Now, and what about a psychiatrist? Now, I, the first thing you see here is called diagnosis, yeah? Yeah, psychiatrist, their Bible is DSM, huh? DSM-5, ICD-10, is it? Now 11. Oh, now 11, okay. <laughs> so this is a book where they flip, 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 okay? Oh, symptom, symptom, symptom. Okay, so you have major depressive disorder. Okay, so this is called diagnosis. Yeah, um, diagnosis has a lot of controversy, but I think diagnosis is helpful. It's a language. So when if Doctor So tell me that oh I have a client that would like to see you major depressive disorder, I kind of know how to deal with it. But that is not the main thing. The name is not a main thing. It is just for communication. So don't worry about the name. Okay, um, I would say that. My personal view is psychiatrists are very well trained in so-called diagnosis. They are very sharp because they see so many, so many, so many patients. They are very sharp. So I, I always, uh, I, I like to work with psychiatrists because I would like them to, to have a very quick screening, give me an idea what is, what, how can I help the client, yeah? Whereas for clinical psychologists, we kind of, we take our time, we talk one hour, you know, your history, your mother, your father, your grandmother, you know. So we work, we work well together with a psychiatrist. And counsellor, yes, counsellor to me is always very gentle. They journey with you, especially the person-centred. All the volunteers say you're no person-centred approach. Yeah? Um, okay, now psychiatrists are also trained in psychotherapy. Right? They are trained in psychotherapy, but I think this is my personal view, Dr. So, you can correct me. I think it's because of the demand of the job uh, in the hospital and all this. The psychiatrists actually don't have much time to really sit down and talk you know, about where you're coming from, you know, your ancestors. So, so that, that's why a lot of people always think that psychiatrists only dish out medication. Yeah? But I have very good experience with uh, psychiatrists who, yes, they can dish out medication, which is sometimes is very, very helpful, yeah? And, uh, and the psychiatrist will also say that, you know, this medication is for you to just help you, to support you. Now, please, go and see Miss Casey, okay? Then talk more about your problem, and she will help you to cope. Uh, she will help you to understand, you know, the clarity and the journey thing. Yeah, so, so we don't like kind of, there is no need to segregate. You know, it's okay to see a psychiatrist. Then we work together with a clinical psychologist. Um, now, so I, I want to have this one more qualification over what a registered counsellor uh, does. So over here it says that it's healthy population, uh, mildly distressed. But I also know of very experienced and well-trained counsellors who are very good in even dealing with very severe mental disorder. So once we, com we complete our, our study, we come out, it depends. We go for our training, like for me and, and Sister Mian, we are also going into family therapy, which is used to psychiatry clinics. Um, you have a private psychological centers, I'll go into detail. Um, and in the universities, you know, that trained all these um, mental health professionals, there are centers and also non-profit organizations. Huh? Okay, so very briefly, <laughs> in a government hospital, uh, major government hospitals will have psychiatrists, psychiatrist trainees, 
as well as clinical psychologists and uh, and counselors. Yeah. <coughs> um, I mean, like like our training was in the hospital. As far as the fees is concerned, it's very very minimal, and um, usually a referral letter is required. So this is the government uh, hospital. Now. Government hospital usually the queue is a bit long, so if you choose to go to a private hospital, again, major private hospitals will have psychiatrists, clinical psychologists, and also registered counsellors. Um, now there are some psychiatry clinics. Huh? Psychiatry clinics depend. Some of the psychiatry clinics only have psychiatrists, but some they also have uh, clinical psychologists and registered counsellors. This is the one of the centres that I work have actually uh, multidisciplinary. And of course, if you go to a private hospitals and a private clinics, then the, there is charges by hour. Now, I put it here that it's usually 150 to 450. Um, I'm not sure whether it has changed, but it should be around the range, yeah? And uh, no referral letters is required for that one. Um, okay, now private psychological centers, uh, this is different from psychiatry clinic. So these are like counselling centres, it's private and usually is run by clinical psychologists and registered counsellors. Against the charges is by hour and no referral uh, letter is required. Um, now universities, uh, universities like um, HELP, HELP University, um, like UKM, that train uh, clinical psychologists, train counsellors, usually there is a student clinic, so where the student do their internship there. And the lecturers there do sometimes also provide uh, therapy. Um, fees is usually either is FOC or is minimal, and usually a referral letters will be required. Um, a non-profit organization. Now, non-profit organization is pro bono. Um, now, I'm going to talk about para counselors a little bit later. I think over here you can see the notes. Now, what is para counselors? So, in non-profit organizations, there are para counselors who who provide. Uh, the support and some also do have clinical psychologists like I, I do pro bono in one of the uh, organization is FOC or sometimes it charge very minimal fee or a subsidized fee. Uh, it depends whether you need referral letters or not but queue is usually a little bit long for this one. So now I'm going to talk about helplines since we're in we're talking about gem helplines. Huh? So helplines are run by volunteers okay like our volunteers here and they are called paraprofessionals usually. So paraprofessionals are those that uh, who are not who did not go through the master program but are trained. Huh? So you can see that in in gem helplines, the trainer, the I mean the volunteers went through one level one, level two, and our trainers, if you could see, they are all mental health professionals. So this is um, this is helplines. Now what does helpline provide? Okay. Now, helpline provide emotional support, okay? Emotional support. Helplines, volunteers don't, um, don't do therapy. It's, it's emotional support. Um, and like in, in GEM helpline, this is quite specific. The volunteers also help to identify the mental health needs. And sometimes if uh, our volunteers need, uh, know that you, know, you need certain help, uh, they are the resources to help you to go to a, refer you to a certain mental health professionals. Um, our helpline also provide information if you want to know like where do I go to, you know, all those information that I gave you just now. The helpline volunteers actually have the list where to go to. And of course it is FOC. Okay? So this is about helplines and uh, these are some of the helplines that I, I know. Okay? GEM helpline is one, befrienders, everybody know about it. Uh, Mitra line, Mitra line is very well established, lifeline, and this is something very special, which is um, this one, uh, the buddy bear. Buddy bear was set up, I think, during the uh, COVID time. These are for children. Yeah, it's very special. Um, okay, so I'm going to end this talk uh, with a parable of the poisoned arrow. Now, why, why I thought of this parable? Now, this parable is, is a Buddhist uh, story. That's what uh, Buddha said in one of the sutta. Um, the story goes like this. A man, you know, uh, at a war, he was shot by a poison arrow. And when the doctor and the surgeon wanted to treat him, 
He said, no, 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 you wait. I want to know who shot me. Is the person who shot me of a specific caste? What is the colour of his skin? What is his family background? I also want to know about the arrow, you know. The bow, what is the bow made of? Is it gold? Is it silver? Is it wood? I want to know the arrow, the feather is peacock, or is it felon, or is whatever it is. I want to know so much thing. Now, so the point, the, the point I'm trying to say is, from my own experience, um, when, when people have mental illness, it's very, very painful. It's very painful, okay? It's very hard. And the important thing is seek help. You know, let the surgeon and the doctor deal with that wound. Remove the arrow. All these questions, oh, I got depression. Is it because I'm sick, I'm weak? Is it because I'm lazy? Is it because uh, uh, I'm seeking attention? Uh, what, what would people say about me? All these questions, I won't say it's not important, maybe later, maybe later, yeah? But it's not relevant at that moment. The, mom the important thing now is get the arrow out, neutralize the poison, improve your quality of life. That is the most important thing at the moment. So I'm going to end this session by saying that if you have some form of, if you're troubled, you're, even if you're not into, you know, you know all this, remember Dr. So talked about that few things, you can cope, blah, whether you contribute. You, you don't have to fulfill all for, oh, I cannot this, I cannot this, I cannot this, then I seek help. When you find that you're stressed, okay, you know, I'm getting a little bit, my behavior is, is, is a little bit snarky, I snap a lot, you know. Yeah, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Love yourself. Seek help. Remember, therapy is not just about talking, not about curing mental illness. It's also about coping skill. You can go to therapy and say, that, oh, I'm very stressed. Yes, the therapist help you. Okay, let's do some stress management, some breathing. I, I'm a mindfulness teacher. Let's do some mindfulness. Go to Sister Mian's mindfulness program. I'm running MBCT. Can you come to my MBCT? Seek help. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to end this segment. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Casey.